everyone was in like hyper competitive, but they were not hyper competitive with each other. They're hyper competitive with yourself from yesterday. And if you can be better than yourself from yesterday, like you are going to go places. And if you can help and be help the, those around you also go places, like the world is going to be a better place. Are you looking to build influence or maybe to drive more traffic? But bottom line, you want to change the game. You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Business Building Book Club. We're going to give you the tools you need to succeed both online and in person. Brought to you by Coach Molly and Three Pines Leadership. Hey everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode of the Business Building Book Club. I'm your host, Coach Molly from Three Pines Leadership, and it's time for another conversation. Dun, dun, dun. So last week, we dove into another one of Russell Brunson's expert secrets, and this week, we're going to start talking about how we can apply this new opportunity kind of concept in an actual business. So uh, we're going to start a little mini series for the next couple episodes. For those of you in the know, you're in the know. Uh, but we're, I'm going to call it the two Corys because today you're going to meet a Corey and then in a couple of weeks you're going to meet another awesome Corey. So welcome to the two Corys. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're diving in to vehicles, new opportunities, opportunity switch it like, oh, OK, lots of content to read through. So make sure you pick up your copy of Expert Secrets. Russell's giving them away absolutely free. You just have to pay for shipping. The links are in the description box. I don't need to tell you this. You've heard it from me before. All right, let's dive in. So our guest, our guest, not only is he one of my favorite insiders, but he is also half of the hindsight, hindsight hacking team. Hmm. That's just a little bit of sprinkling some seeds that we'll get to <laughs> later on. So I'm going to let Corey introduce himself. So Corey, who are you and what do you do? Uh, Molly, I am so stoked to be here. Thank you so much uh, for having me. And, and honestly, like Expert Secrets is probably the book I would say that changed my life, changed the direction of my life. So out of all the books that you might go through, this is number one on my list. And so I'm, I'm sad I only get to talk about one chapter, but maybe I'll talk you into another. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, you said it right. I'm the co-partner of Hindsight Hacking Podcast. We have an agency, Hindsight Hacking Media, and honestly, I spent roughly 20 years, 25 years in the restaurant industry, growing and doing all kinds of things that the only good things that, that I was really doing was developing people mm -hmm. and helping people and serving people that help them get goals that they never thought they could get. But then uh, I met my business partner doing the same thing. We found out we absolutely just could care less about the company that we were with. But we loved the people side. And so we started developing some fun things, a uh, bunch of in-person coaching, in coaching, a bunch of seminar, all the things that we love to do. And then we discovered ClickFunnels. And, you know, I could throw in the towel of everything that was normal. From there, uh, I did the One Funnel Away Challenge. I kept telling Ron, like, come on, let's go. We got to figure this out. Uh, found Catherine Jones and signed up for CF Design School right away. And literally everything that went the direction for our business, it started because of Expert Secrets, One Funnel Away Challenge, Russell Brunson, uh, and then very, very shortly after, Catherine Jones. So it's kind of cool that we met through Catherine, and uh, now we get to share some of the same stories and uh, information over the next year. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, that's enough about me. Let's dig into some Expert Secrets. What do you say? <laughs> Oh, I love it. So tell us about hindsight hacking. What is it? What do you guys do? And how are we going? Well, that'll help us figure out how we're going to apply these frameworks that Russell's talking about to talking about your business. So what's hindsight hacking? Yes, yes. That's, you know, we have a framework that we developed 100% because of going through the one follow away challenge and, and learning about a little concept called the dream 100. Mm. And then you know, finding ourselves trying to get like, hey, Russell Brunson's number one on my list. I want to meet him, do business with him, get to know his audience. 
And, you know, if I was to just follow the dream 100 and send him gifts, which he doesn't need, or try to get noticed by him, it's challenging, takes a lot of time. I don't want to be 10 years from now and be Russell Brunson trying to get Tony Robbins knowledge and interface, right? And it took him 10 years to find that business partnership. I don't know about you, but I didn't have 10 years, right? So I came up with or Ron and I, my partner, came up with a, basically a new opportunity to help bridge that gap and uh, find that framework. So hindsight hacking, we on our podcast, we hack highly successful entrepreneurs hindsight to give our listeners clear foresight. And then, and through that, our uh, business, our media, our, uh, the agency, we help funnels and Facebook ads and all the online digital, digital stuff, social media, and, and it, this whole business, our whole agency started by accident. Our whole agency started just because we, we were like, yeah, I can help you. Sure. And then referrals happened and referrals happened. And we've, I mean, I literally built the website for this probably two weeks ago. And we've been running this agency now for over six months and never once did a single thing for marketing. So it's kind of weird to have a marketing agency and never do any marketing for it. Right. I've, and, and so we're running ads to, to something, to a workshop we're doing now for the first time. And it has nothing to do with the agency. So our agency still has allowed both Ron and I to leave the old jobs that we had. And now we just help people online and it couldn't have been a better time with the whole pandemic and everybody shutting things down. Right. Like we couldn't go anywhere. So we uh, help people through that agency and uh, yeah, long story short, that's, that's kind of what's going on. Oh, I love it. And you, you say some of my favorite words in there. So perfectly themed to today's episode. So you created not only a framework, a step-by-step -step process that's going to help people get to their tangible result of being more visible, increasing their, in, their influence and their income and all of that kind of stuff with their businesses. So you have the step-by-step -step process, but it's wrapped around in this incredible new opportunity, this vehicle that is hindsight hacking, because what you've done is you've looked at what your competitors are doing, what they're offering, where they're falling short, what difficulties you felt going through those processes yourself. And, and you found ways to fill in the gaps and ways to expedite that process for people. You've condensed it down into an easy to follow vehicle with step-by-step -step frameworks. And you have ways of getting it out into the world, like through your podcast and increasing that community. It's just an incredible thing that you guys have done. And that is what this chapter is all about. Boom. Yes. And it. it's, it's so funny. When we first started playing in the game, the difference to, to truly understand the difference between an improvement and a new opportunity, like was, was definitely not something that, that we understood. And, and so at the end of the day, though, we found like the, the true gap from where we were to where we wanted to be, there, there was nobody serving in that space. And so it, it, it made sense that we had to get the new opportunity. We had to create the framework because we didn't want others to be stuck in that same space that we were, right? And, and you, you speak a language that Ron and I love, and that's visibility, right? And that is... And, and hacker, right? Like obviously hindsight hacking, uh, but, but visibility, like we, we set out to do things a little different. Like we, the fact that we get clients for our agency without ever do, lifting a word, you know, lifting a finger, it started with doing things to be visible, right? Like we, we actually knew nothing about podcasts, but now we do a ton with podcasting from coaching. Um, you know, Ron has been helping some folks with Jamie Atkinson's program, He's been coaching with them for now seven, seven months. And so he, we've helped tons of people launch into the charts, right? Now we have our own version of helping people launch into the charts while doing all the done for you assets, right? Some people don't know how to do the editing themselves. They don't know how to do the graphics themselves. And those technical things stop people from getting their message out, right? And so we focus on that visibility piece for specifically on podcasting. We focus on that visibility piece to help it make it frictionless for them, right? Like that's, we wanna help people be visible and to do that, how can you make it easy for them? How can you get it figured out, right? And so 
visibility, a getting your message out through podcasts is one very incredible way. And I love podcasts. So I want to be a podcaster. Right. Uh, but then there's so many other things like in, in Facebook groups and, and from when meeting you, you like in our insiders group, like you haven't seen Ron and I jump in there yet. We were finished. We're finishing a project and so, then we're going to jump in. And, but you stand out because of just who you are and how you're out there more than almost everyone out in there. Right. Like some people just take a picture random and that's it, but it's, there's so many different things that you can do for free to be visible. And if anybody wants a, any kind of online business, like they have to be visible, right? If, Cause if you're not visible, if you're not doing things like that, it doesn't matter if you're having an improvement offer or an, a new opportunity, you're It's going to fall flat on its face. Yep. Let's talk about visibility for a sec. So my, okay. cause you brought up my strategy. So I, I got to pull back the curtain since you've dropped that seed. So <laughs> my strategy is show up authentically be you and share your journey with people. Share the things that you're learning, share the things that you're excited about and be there for people. Because this is, I had this encounter a few weeks ago with uh, someone I was engaging with online and they were, they're a much more um, established name in the digital space. Let's just say that. And they were coming down on me saying that my, my strategy is a fraud. My coach is a fraud, et cetera, et cetera. And then I was like, well, clearly what I'm doing is working because you're showing up in my DMs complimenting the things that I'm doing. Okay. So I am being seen by people I want to be seen by. But then also I'm able to do that, as you said, without spending any kind of money. I'm just sharing what I'm learning. It's like being in school. And when they ask you to keep a journal of what you're doing throughout the course, it's that's what I'm doing. And that's how I'm using social media. And I had this other influencer marketing person uh, get in touch with me. I and do they want were names. Let's share, some, share some names. Come oh, on. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will offline. share names of people who I want to celebrate. That's, ah, okay, that's what I do. I don't throw shade. <laughs> so, so this person was commenting on the fact that I'm marketing myself as a digital strategist, yet my engagement on a variety of my social platforms is really low. I'm not getting likes. I'm not getting comments. I'm not, but those aren't the metrics I'm looking for. I'm looking for the back end metrics. I will put a, I will put 20 posts together that get zero likes. But if it reaches the one person who's willing to spend $25,000 for an hour of my time, then I think what I've done is correct. So it's looking at what your, how you're showing up and what your ultimate end goal is when you're showing up. Is it to get a bunch of likes and get a bunch of followers or is it to actually get people to trust you enough to open their wallets and throw their credit cards at you? Yeah, a hundred percent. And, and from uh, Josh Forty, he, uh, you know, has this program. Like, so we, we did, uh, Ron actually did this whole workbook that he's got for his thousand Academy program, this newer one. And, uh, and his whole message in there is, do you want to talk, do you want a million people following you? Or do you want a thousand people that buy from you over and over and over again? Yeah, I want the thousand. I don't need, I don't need the million. Give me the ones that are the one person that's going to buy versus the 20 likes or whatever it is. Right. Absolutely. And the, the visibility piece, it's so fun. It, you can have fun with it. Right. Like just go, being genuine, you know, I have a tattoo on my back. It's like a Japanese kanji symbol about genuine. Like that is something new, near and true to my heart. And, but like Ron and I, we would go and purposefully go do a challenge for somebody or in somebody's like free challenge or whatever. And we would do homework only. We wouldn't just go do homework and be like, Hey, this is our homework, right? Here's my PDF. No, we would go and make a production. We would make a video that's branded all over the place and we would have fun. We would be creative and it would take longer than a 20 minute homework. But by the end of this challenge, like we had people asking us, Oh, do you work for yeah. whoever's throwing this challenge on? Exactly. No, we don't work for them, <laughs> but they think it because a we're edifying them so much, but B we branded ourselves throughout that then business just starts coming. And like we've, we had done that in, in Catherine's challenge. Yep. And we had, you know, like different things because 
if it has fun, people notice you. And next thing you know, you don't have to do a sales call yep. because people just come to you and you're genuine and you have conversations. And if you can fill their need, all started because of getting visible. Yep. Absolutely. So I gotta, I gotta ask, I know in my own journey in this digital space, I was working on improvement offers because I really didn't understand the difference. I was all about, oh, I can do this better. I can help you do this faster. All the er words as, as Russell puts it in the book. Yes. So did your journey look that like that as well? A hundred percent. The first six months it was Oh yeah, we could do it better than that. We could do it faster. All the, the, those words like were common, uh, and and so it we one hundred percent believe if if you want to coach people, you better have a coach. And so you know, starting I would say around December of twenty nineteen, we we officially started to make sure we had the right coaches around, and and he, they really helped us with the whole improvement versus um, new opportunity and. And then, I mean, but through that, if you are focused on who you want to serve and how you want to serve them, you can usually find that new opportunity. And so it becomes more natural. It becomes more genuine. You're not just, it's not about the money, right? And so again, that went back to, we came out of OFA. We had a million shiny objects showing up and not really knowing what to do, but we knew this Dream 100 concept that was a good idea, you know? And, and so our whole thing, basically our whole new framework with the new opportunity basically came from that. And then we started talking and it's like, uh, Alex Elliott was the, really the first person that was on our podcast that was like, run and make this go for it. Like that was the first time we shared it. And so like, okay, okay, we're, we're on it. <laughs> right. And then uh, getting, getting some of the other people. And we have like JV master classes of people in our program that we had, we do from, you know, those that gave us words of encouragement to build it. Right. And so Catherine Jones and Alex Elliott, Brian Delaney, a couple of good, good folks that are providing a little bit for our own program, but it all started with our new opportunity. That is the missing gap. It was not something to improve. It was not faster, bigger, better, it was, it was new. And, and so therefore uh, people that have had the pain of the old opportunity, now they don't have to see themselves fighting through that pain to be better, faster, whatever, right? Like they see themselves in the new opportunity, just making new decisions. And uh, there's not the experience that handicaps them. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So Russell also talks about status being the only thing that actually moves people to do anything, right? So we're yes. talking about either increasing your status. So moving towards the increase of your status or moving away from the decrease of your status. So let's talk about increasing status with your, with hindsight hacking. And then afterwards, we'll talk about what they're trying to get away from in terms of decreasing their status. Yeah. Um, it, in terms of hindsight hacking, I, well, let me, let me stop first. Cause when I'm reading that chapter and talking about status, uh, when I read it the first time in 2019, it didn't, it didn't resonate like status. Okay. I get it. You know, decrease, increase, whatever. Right. Not a big deal, but I went to funnel hacking live in 2020 in January, February ish. And Tony Robbins was talking and he was talking about the whole status thing. And, and he had a couple people and he's like, here's this purse, right? How many people, how much is it? Right. And uh, then how much is this one? And one's like 2000 and one's 20 bucks. And, but they're both all about status, right? Like the status of the one that saves money and is thrifty, right. Versus the status of the one that I want the Louis Vuitton or whatever. Right. And that same in the book talks about the Ferrari versus, you know, a more reasonable car. And, and so that was the first time that that message really hit home for me. And I didn't, I never realized how much personally, like I was driven by status, whether it be like, I, I was, I never needed a fancy car, but I, I've always needed somewhat of a nice car, right? Like I have a Ford edge, like nothing super nice, but it's got leather seats. It's white. It's clean. You know what I mean? Like it feels good. It drives good. And 
every one of my cars, like none of them are f- super fancy, but I guarantee I, every couple of years, I make sure that it's, it's somewhat nice. Right. And that's my own personal status. Whereas my wife, she's like 12 years from now, I'll ha- maybe I'll switch my car. Like, no, I, I'm not going to be seen in your car if it's that old, <laughs> right? <laughs> it doesn't have to be a super nice car, but it, you know what I mean? And so I never really realized that the status for me uh, that with just all those little things. But circling back to hindsight hacking and the podcast, again, I love podcasts and I've been listening to podcasts for years. Back when, before COVID, when I actually had to drive places, I would listen to them to and from every day. And, uh, and so it, it was, it was easy for when we heard the go publish, well, I must go publish there. And that, that is, you know, if I can say I'm a podcaster, you know, when I started and when we started, we were horrible and you listen to the first couple episodes and you know that, but I think we got a little better over time, a little bit. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the audience agrees, but the status that comes with, with it. I mean, we, we wouldn't have our business the way it is without the status that we gain from doing the things that we do to be visible. And, uh, and I mean, we changed our entire agency business to match our podcast because of people noticing that. And they, you know, we, our old company, we literally shut down and made hindsight hacking media because nobody resonated with the old company. (laughs) So uh, but yeah, definitely the status thing, uh, you know, that is a, a, a unique way. And if everyone can look at it when you're trying to sell someone something or when someone's trying to sell you something, right? Like, don't look at it in a negative way. Just look, was this going to increase my status to what I want or, or not? Yeah. Right. And if it's, if it's not, what's the worst that can happen? Oh, I'm out 50 bucks on this weight loss thing. No. Okay. But does that really matter? or I tried this diet and it didn't work. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's okay at the end of the day. So uh, if we could all go into these sales meetings and in positions of that, in that like calm nature, then it doesn't matter if someone tries to sell you something. And if you need it, you need it. If you don't, you don't. It's, it reminds me of dating advice that I saw once on TV that I don't really care for dating advice, but this one just totally resonated with me and the guy was saying don't get upset every breakup you go through like realize that if you believe in the idea that you have one true soulmate then there's literally one person out there and everyone else you're trying out is not the right fit so if you recognize that in the first place when those relationships end or when that that status isn't isn't met or you've gone through the challenge and it's not what you were expecting it to be well that's okay because the next one is still out there. You're still searching for it. You've realized that's not the right one. Cool. You've learned something. Move on now. So yeah. I think um, I love that what you guys do in terms of elevating other business owners with your podcast, with your services, is also helping them elevate their status in terms of um, being able to accomplish things and level up their platform and level up their visibility um, in a way that allows them to share their talents and skills with the world, therefore leveling up their people as well. So you're kind of like the master of ripple effect. Yeah. Have you been to the website? I don't yeah. think I, I don't think I've shared the now my dream 22 website. Have you been there? Oh, no. Yeah, we haven't talked about that. Like that's the that's the new opportunity. And so our whole thing is gain more visibility, more traffic, more sales through leveling up with JV partnerships. And and so that's so like when you talked about visibility and leveling up, I'm like, did you go there? Like <laughs> I, okay, so we are so synergistic in the way that we think. Both of us are focused on visibility. We're both focused on JVs. We're talking about podcasts. Like, I am so, so amazed at the incredible people that you meet when you start playing this game, when you start showing up authentically with, with whatever excites you and whatever your new vehicle is that's going to change the world. When you start sharing that with the world, you start making these kinds of connections with people who, if you may, maybe you're new to this game and you might be thinking, oh, Molly's a visibility hacker and, and Corey's all into visibility and hindsight hacking. They must be competing against each other. But we, what we do, we might have 
a similar goal, but we're taking completely different paths in completely different vehicles in a way that I, at least I try and focus my business on becoming complementary. So yeah. what do you think about compliment being complementary to people in your same industry while also um, being able to, to serve each other's audiences in that way? Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're worried about competition, then you've already lost. Mm. And so, you know, I think my first message to you was like, Hey, I need to know you. You're all about visibility. I promise I am too. Like we got to get to know each other. And it was purely on a sense of how can we help each other? And like, that's, if I help you at the end of the day, you might help me at the end of the day. If you don't help me, I'll still feel good about helping you. You know what I mean? Like, so there is no competition and uh, another funnel hacking live story. I haven't told funnel hacking live stories in a while. So this is fun, but uh, FHL was fantastic. Nice. You were there. Awesome. Uh, so in um, when I came to this space, everyone, and, and this was so evident at FHL, everyone was in like hyper competitive, but they were not hyper competitive with each other. They're hyper competitive with yourself from yesterday. And if you can be better than yourself from yesterday, like you are going to go places. And if you can help and be help the, those around you also go places, like the world is going to be a better place. Right. And, and so that was like, I loved every second of FHL because of that one, one thing, every single person I met, it was all about how can I help you? I've, I've got this. Right. And people are trying, I mean, people, it's like so cyclical, right? Like I might buy something from you and then you might buy something from me. Like we're all trying to pass everything around if it makes sense for what you do and what you, who you serve. And, and so I love the community for that. And at the end of the day, you know, this whole visibility thing, like I, you and I are serving different people. And if we can help each other grow, like, it's, it's the way it should be. And there's zero competition, zero. So, so I, I started my, my, well, not started my digital journey, but a big portion of my digital journey has been under the brand name of three pines leadership, which started out as a whole different thing. Long story. We're not getting into it here, but it was based on the idea of, of helping people learn how to communicate and of helping people, um, embrace their conflicts and kind of step up. And it started because when I first got into the, let's start talk about the ClickFunnels community. When <laughs> I got into the ClickFunnels community, it was, I was seeing vultures, vultures, like people who were absolutely just tearing the platform apart. And then there was people who were trying to serve value uh, and then there was people who were just preying on everyone. Like they were, they were total vultures. And then I realized I was just looking at the publicly available Facebook group and that's it. And then once you dive deeper into the community, you start to see, oh, well, there's the, the platinum forums. And those are all people who have purchased and bought into this software, who are playing this game, who are there to help each other out. You got a new funnel. You want to throw some ideas out there. You want people's input. People are willing to help. It was, it was fantastic. But when I showed up at Funnel Hacking Live, I was so nervous. Like I showed up a couple days early so I could hide in my room and the window <laughs> from my room could look at the uh, general access area. So nice. I could spy and see how many people were there. So I timed my sign in time to when there wasn't a lot of people. Like I was so scared to be there. So I went in with that mindset. Then we show up and, and the, we're waiting outside for the doors to open and I, my anxiety was becoming worse and worse because I was one of, when I counted, five women in a sea of men. There was a lot more ladies there, but I just couldn't see them from where I was. And I was like, oh, great. This is making me feel out of place as well. But then you start talking to these people and they are so excited about what they do. Some of them were just getting into the space. Some of them had been in there for years and they they paid tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, for, for their services and whatnot. But no matter where you were on that journey, everyone was excited to be there and excited to serve. And it was just such an incredible experience to be there amongst everyone 
And then Tony Robbins showed up and like, I just, I just cried. But so my funnel hacking live story, my like exciting moment, there became this core group of us. And every day we would sit in the same seats. We would fight, you know, through and save the seats and all of that stuff. And it became this awesome group. And honestly, I've lost contact with most of the people in that group. I know. But the, but I'm still looking. I'm still looking. If you happen to run a karate um, program in Detroit, as well as working with militaries and governments around the world, helping teach um, self-defense, um, get in contact with me. I miss you. We had fantastic conversations. Uh, missed connection. Let's talk. Let's connect. Um, but I was able to also connect with these incredible women because I was showing up authentically. I was being excited about being there. I was introducing myself. I was going out of my comfort zone. And it was starting to attract people to me. This one woman literally walked from across the room to come sit next to me to chat about what was going on. And at this point, I really had no idea what my business was. No idea what my business was. But it was through connecting with people that I realized why, why I named my business what I named it. Okay, so coming back to Three Pines leadership. So Three Pines is the idea that we're not, we can stand on the cliff and be a singular tree and we can try and shoulder the burden of all of the wind and all of the weather, or we can stand with trees amongst us and we can all lift the canopy together. And that way we're shouldering the burden all of us together. And that way we're, we're able to level up everyone's businesses together. And that's why I never gave up on Three Pines Leadership as a brand. Oh, I love it. That's my story. <laughs> I got, goosebumps. I got goosebumps over here. You know, what's funny. Uh, one more story of, of FHL. So I also met a group of folks and we all like, there's about five of us and we all kind of followed um, like Alex Elliott, Doug Bouton, um, and Jamie Atkinson, right? And so at 2019 FHL, those three names, like they were the rookies like us yeah. in 2020. Like they, they had barely figured out what their business was if they, if at that. They had barely made any money, if any. And then come the course of the next 12 months and all of them had made multiple six figures. They all serve people in such a positive way, right? And so there's a group of us that we were like, okay, we all want to be them next year. And part of, part of that is I created a little mastermind. So we still meet every single Wednesday and we have since FHL and we talk about wins and opportunities and do some trainings and hot seats and all this stuff uh, to, to make sure that all of us keep going in that road. And what's funny is there was five of us that all had other like full-time jobs at that point. And now none of us have full-time jobs. We just have our businesses. So, Oh man. I remember sitting on those seats watching um, the two comma club awards, the two comma club X. So P those of you who don't know two comma club means your you have one singular funnel that is brought in at least $1 million. So that's one area of your business that has brought in that money Two comma club X $10 million. They came up with the two comma club C, which means you've made up to a hundred million dollars. Like the people are pushing massive money behind the scenes here. And I'm sitting there absolutely in awe. In yeah. awe, my hands were raw because I was so overcome with, with excitement for every single one of those people. Some of them whose names had just become little, little birds chirping in my ear a few months earlier and to see them and to celebrate with and for them. My hands were so raw clapping for them. But I said, I made a pledge and I said that I will be on that stage. Maybe 2021, maybe 2022. I'm hoping for 2022 when we're back live together. Just, just saying, but we can strive for 2021. But it was, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got another Funnel Hacking Live question for you. Okay, I love it. <laughs> okay, last day before we were all dismissed, Russell made us write a letter to ourselves that apparently he was going to mail to us in six months. Have you gotten yours? Okay. No, I, I completely forgot at him. That. I have this uh, this Operation B scene going on. So I'm like constantly tweeting at Russell and commenting on his stuff and like pushing stuff. And nice. he actually responds back or his VA does. 
So uh, that's right. the only tweet he has not responded to yet when I asked uh, if that's still a thing. Did you get on his his text thing he's doing? No, Canada. Oh, is it, a, is it U.S. only? It's, a lot of them don't work for outside of the U.S., uh, so I don't gotcha. even bother anymore. <laughs> gotcha. Well, one, one more story about the book to tie it back to this book. <laughs> oh, yeah, the book. Alex, Alex Formosi. <laughs> yep. One of the the C awards, two C C. What is it? Two C C C awards. I don't know. Or something. He got the biggest something award there is, and got a second Correct. award for the amount of money he's been able to donate to charity through his funnels and stuff, which is another step that Russell is taking to help us serve our communities to the deepest way possible. I just. Props to him. Yes, the two purple heart. And Ron and I actually have a plan to get that. Like we are focused on that over the two CC, but that's another. But uh, Alex Hermosi, and anybody that listens to Russell's podcast, they'll know this story. But Alex Hermosi, he, guess how many books that he reads? Oh, no. He, I bet he is more than one a week. He actually does not read very many books. He reads, he reads this book. Over and over and over. He literally reads it and then flips it and starts back over. Like that is, is his key to success. Key to truly understanding the book and implementing everything is you read it, yeah. implement, read, implement, read, start over. Implement, read, implement, read. And uh, that, that advice, I mean, is just, I have so many books I want to read, but I... I am not going away from the Russell Brunson books until I feel I know that stuff back and front. Yep. Yep. I, I love that idea. <laughs> so I heard that first, I'm sure it was in OFA when um, Lady Boss herself, Kaylin Poulin was talking about how when she started, um, okay, backstory, her and her partner, her husband at the, or her boyfriend at the time, her husband now, um, wh- they had nothing. They barely even had enough money to pay their rent. And they realized that Russell has the power to change people's lives and their businesses. So they decided they were going to take maybe the first step up package, maybe a couple grand. And by accident, or maybe a, a stroke of great genius, they accidentally uh, bought the way more expensive package. After a moment of like freak out of, oh no, we literally can't afford this. They realized that they were going to embrace that opportunity and they ran with it full force. And they decided to take on the mentality of do what Russell says. Hashtag do what Russell says. We're not a cult, I promise. Um, But what they did was they would listen to something that Russell would teach. They would pause the video and they would not press play again until they had implemented that in their business. So I, I tried that at first, but when I was first getting into this world, I, I needed a bit more background information for that to actually work for me. Yep. But I am at a point now where, oh my goodness, I was doing it unintentionally, reading through these chapters here on the book club, and then being able to engage with other business owners about these topics really has just ignited the way that I started to understand these. And now you guys can follow along at home because backstory of what I'm doing behind the scenes is I'm implementing these things as I'm teaching them to you guys. And boy, oh boy, they're going to change your life. Absolutely. That's, that's why I wanted to come on your show because I loved the idea of, of you actually like talking about one, one chapter at a time, right? Obviously we've, we've, you know, gone away and had a few other side tangent conversations, but it, it starts true with, with, you know, this, the book and it's the book that changed my life. Right. And it's the book that can change so many, many others. And to hear somebody that's making a hundred million dollars, read one book yep. eight times, eight, nine times over There's and gotta over. There's got to be value in it then. Exactly. Like he read it when it first came out. And so, and this is him in 2020, he's read it like nine times. It's the only book he's reading in the new hard copy book. Like he, it's so smart. Let's all do it. Let's all implement hashtag do what Russell says. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's a bunch of like, you don't have to just do what Russell says. There are other incredible 
coaches and and guides in this community that are there to help serve you at whatever level you are in your journey, wherever you are in your journey, however whatever challenge you need to learn how to overcome. There are people there. You want to learn about podcasts? Well, I got the guy for you. You want to learn about creating the best video content? Oh, I got some Marley Jacks who's going to change your life. You want to learn about creating the most incredible offers that are going to make your customers drool before they can hand you over everything they have? Yeah, well, I got Steve Larson for you. There are so many incredible people who are teaching such high value stuff. You just have to be able to let go and you have to be able to trust them and say, all right, you've done this. It's obviously worked for you. So I'm a, I'm just going to be a little bit humble here and I'm going to follow what you do. And man, it will change your business. It'll level you up in a way you never thought possible. <laughs> yeah. And if, if every one of us, if we, if we asked ourselves the question, is it worse to try and fail? Is it worse to get involved with a coach and then not listen to them and stay stagnant. Yeah. Right. Like that's, what's worse for me. Yeah. I would rather fail than be in the exact same shoes that I'm in today, you know, a year from now. Yeah. Right. And so if I don't listen to a coach, if I don't listen to somebody that's gone there before, then I'll be in the same place. Right. Like you're, yep. you can get so far by yourself, but if you have the three pines leadership, you can have, a whole group, right? Like you can get there with others to do things the right way. And so definitely uh, love it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So before we, uh, before we head out, how can people get into your world? Well, uh, they can definitely find me on Facebook. Uh, Corey E22 is, is my, my tag there on Facebook, Instagram. Um, but follow me on hindsight hacking, uh, podcast for one, uh, go to now my dream 22.com for, if you want to look how to level up, uh, with some JV partnerships and uh, yeah, see, we've got a Facebook group. You can go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash now 22. A lot of fun things happen in there. We've got a free workshop running. And so by the time this show airs, it will be day five of that five day workshop. So they can catch the replays if they come and join on that day. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's all about get more visible, get more traffic, get more sales. Let's go. <laughs> and you definitely have a fantastic podcast and you pick some pretty incredible guests, including yours truly. So if you're listening to this podcast on the day that it's launching, you have the, the uh, consider it my backstage pass invitation to head on over to the hindsight hacking podcast. Well, actually head on over to the, to Corey's group today when this heads out um, and then you can watch my interview on Corey's show live and then on the next Monday coming up you can also check out in podcast format because what is better than sharing this message on as many platforms as possible with as many cool amazing people as there is possible. <laughs> yes and, and Molly it's going to be a blast you get to know Ron a little bit and uh our podcast is, is kind of run how you and I have been talking today. And that is where the conversation goes. That's where it goes. And, and we'll provide value uh, through that conversation and through the topics that we cover that uh, everybody, I, I think, will enjoy the, the conversation. Your podcast is definitely on my personal listening list. So uh, if that's a recommendation, then that's <laughs> definitely a recommendation, guys. You should be. I only listen to five podcasts, guys. That's it. I don't clog up my time. And, and Corey's podcast is definitely in that top five. So check it out. All right, guys, thank, thank you, you so much, so much for joining me for this episode of the Business Building Book Club. It's been a blast. You can tell that not only are we here to help you level up your business, help you become an amazing expert, but we're also here to have some laughs and to introduce you to some amazing people who are not only going to help you level up your business, but they're also going to help you level up your mindset. Ooh. All right, everyone, that's it for this episode. Next week, we are diving back into the book where we're going to talk about using our frameworks in different ways to increase the value, not only the value of money that you're making, but most importantly, the value that you, uh, the value and service that you are providing for your people, because uh, we're all on a mission to change the world, are we not? 
Yeah, we are. All right, guys, that's it for me this episode. I'm Coach Molly from Three Pines Leadership. This has been the Business Building Book Club. Get your copy of Expert Secrets. All the descriptions are, or all the links are in the descriptions. I will see you again next episode. Until then, remember, I love you and be excellent to each other.